Hello everyone, this is Pippin Williamson with Pippin's Pages and Pippin'sPlugins.com. And in this part two of my writing your first WordPress plugin series, um, I would like to show you how to go about structuring your, your plugin. Um, whether you're writing a large scale plugin with thousands of lines of code, or a very simple plugin with maybe a couple dozen lines, a hundred lines, or whatever, there are a few techniques and guidelines that you should always follow and kind of keep in mind when writing your plugin. So I want to show you at least the guidelines that I use and how I start all of my plugins, how I structure them. Um, everybody is a little bit different, so you may have ways that you prefer to do it, but uh, anyway, I'll show you my, my methods and how I structure them, um, and it works really, really well. And it's one thing that I really like to do is keep a set method of doing it. So once you start doing it one way, unless you need to change for whatever reason, do it that way every time. Uh, it keeps your code consistent, it keeps your plugins, uh, it makes them a lot easier to debug, a lot easier to write too, because if you can go in and always expect this kind of code to be in this location, it's going to be a lot easier to come back and edit it, make an update a year down the road. So we're going to continue using the plugin that I showed you how to write in part one uh, called My First WordPress Plugin. Uh, if you remember, it's right here. And this is the plugin that didn't, didn't actually do anything, but it's technically a plugin. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and I'm going to show you how we would expand it into a much larger plugin and how I would structure it. So the very first thing that we're going to do, um, something that I always try to do, is give your plugin its own folder. Um, so right now I'm in the WP Content Plugins folder and you can see all these folders from all the different plugins that I have. I have a lot of plugins installed right now. But you can also see a couple of files down here at the bottom from plugins that are just installed in a, as a single file. Now, this is perfectly fine to install a plugin, assuming it's small, as just its own PHP file. That will work perfectly fine. But for any plugin that you ever want to expand or make larger, add new features, whatever, it's a really good idea to give your plugin its dedica own dedicated folder. The reason being is that if you ever want to separate your plugin into multiple files, it has to be in its own folder. So you might as well start it that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this file. I'm going to create a new one called my first, well, we'll go ahead and name it my first WordPress plugin. Now I'm going to drop this file in here. It's called My First Plugin. Note that your file name and your folder name should mirror each other. So in this case, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and rename this one My First WordPress Plugin to be consistent. Okay, now because I've actually moved the file, that plugin is actually going to become deactivated in WordPress. So you can see it doesn't exist anymore. But if we go to the inactive list, do a search for My First Plugin, there it is. So we can activate it. So it still works exactly the same way. The only difference is, is now my first WordPress plugin has its own file. Um, so because it now has its own folder, sorry, um, it means that we can actually include anything we want inside of this folder for our plugin. So we can include JS jQuery scripts, CSS files, extra PHP files, etc. So that's step one that you should always follow when setting up your WordPress plugin. It should always have its own folder and it should look like this. The main file, your main WordPress plugin file should A, mimic your file name or your folder and B, should always reside in the top level directory of that folder. So if you have subdirectories, it should always be in the base. That makes sense? So uh, now what I want to do is I'm going to show you how, we would going, how we're going to expand this to make this plugin larger. So let's imagine for a moment that we're going to write a plugin that includes CSS files, it includes jQuery files, and includes additional PHP files. Um, at this point we don't know what our plugin is going to be, but we're going to start structuring it such that it can expand to anything we want. So the first thing that I want to do is we're going to set up sections inside of our main plugin file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to section it off and I'm going to comment it out 
um, for individual sections. So the first one that I have is global variables. These are going to be variables or constants. Um, they can be anything that you want that are defined and used throughout the plugin. So for example, I can do this. Um, my plugin name equals my first WordPress plugin. Okay, so this is now a global variable called my plugin name. And when I want to display the text, my first WordPress plugin, I can simply echo out the variable my plugin name. So we're going to start by setting up the global variables. Next, we're going to set up any includes. So what this means is that if we have another file, let's say stored in our includes folder, we're going to do this we're going to run include and this is going to be the path to the file includes um, let's call it scripts.php now note you can use the there's several different functions that you can use for this you can use include require require once um, there are some certain specifications for why you should use um, each one and when you should use each one but general rule of thumb is that include will work perfectly fine just like this okay so now that's our include section I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in just a moment and then uh, after that you may have whatever whatever else you want but this is pretty much what my my main plugin file is going to look like it's going to have two sections sections my globals and my includes and everything else that I do within this within my plugin is going to be achieved in other files. So uh, let's go ahead and open up the scripts file real quick. Actually, we need to make it. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to start it like this, and I'm going to call this. Um, I'm just going to put in a comment here that says uh, script control, something like that. Okay, and we're going to go in here. We're going to go into our includes folder. We're going to name it scripts.php. Okay, so now what we've done is we have two separate files, both of which are actually available to our plugin. We have our main file here, and we have our scripts.php file here. What we're going to do is anything that is a jQuery script, a CSS file, or anything like that, we're going to load and define in this scripts.php file and then you'll notice it's included with this include function right here where we do include include scripts.php the reason we do this is by separating functions and sections of your plugin into multiple files it makes things much better organized so rather than scrolling through a file here that is a thousand two thousand lines long I separate my my plugin into multiple files and then simply include them all into the, this one so I'm gonna create another file and I'm gonna call it oh in just a moment data processing so let's say you're saving data one somewhere or other so I'm gonna call this um, data processing dot PHP and it's going to go inside the includes folder okay data processing and now I'm going to include it over here there the reason I've done this is now that any function that I have that involves saving data inserting it into the database whatever whatever you're doing is all collected in this file so it makes it a lot easier to come back and say okay I need to improve this section of my plugin where do I go well, it's data processing, so I'm going to go to the data processing file. Or, in this case, I'm adding a new jQuery script to my file, so I'm going to go to scripts.php, and it's going to be done in there. So this is how you should do it. Um, now, whether your exact method mimics mine or not doesn't really matter, but the idea is that you should separate your files, separate your plugin into multiple files in a logical way that makes sense. jQuery and CSS is in scripts.php. Anything that interprets data and processes it is in data processing.php. You should also name your files appropriately. Um, you don't want this to be file x.php because that wouldn't make any sense. File x.php doesn't tell you that this file does data processing. Data processing.php, however, does. This is really important when it comes to other people coming and looking at your plugin, modifying it, 
finding a bug, whatever. And it's extremely important for you. If you write your plugin such that a year down the road when you've kind of forgotten about how it works and you can't find anything, you're going to really want to shoot yourself in the foot uh, because it's going to be a horrible experience. Um, the next thing is variable names. So up, like for example, in the global variables, I have named it my plugin name. Well, that works and that makes perfect sense because, well, guess what? It says my plugin name and it's my first WordPress plugin. The name of that variable and the data that it contains makes sense. Now, if I did something like this, x equals, this is a sweet variable, would just be silly and wouldn't make any sense. Because why would I ever interpret x as meaning this is a sweet variable? It simply doesn't make sense. So name your variables and your functions appropriately. Um, so for example, for a function, let's say we are in data processing and we have a function that saves data, I could call it function um, xxyy, like this. But that wouldn't make any sense um, because why would I ever interpret xxyy as a save function? We'll put a little comment in here. That just wouldn't make any sense at all. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it um, save underscore data.php. And that makes perfect sense because here I understand immediately, oh, this function has something to do with saving data. Now, one more thing. Always, always, and I'll repeat one more time, always prefix your functions. Prefix your functions and prefix your variable names. So um, you never, ever want to use something like this. You don't want to do function save data. What you should do instead is a good way to do it is one, you can use your name. So in this case, it'd be pip and underscore save data. And this works pretty well most of the time. Um, I don't always like this because let's say that I have two, two plugins and they both have a save data function. Well, if both of those are active, I'm going to throw a fatal error because you're not allowed to have two functions with the same name. So what I like to do is I will take my plugin name take the first letter of each word and make that into an abbreviation. So in this case, it's my first WordPress plugin, MFWP underscore save data. And I will use MFWP as a prefix throughout my entire plugin. So if I go back here, rather than having this, my plugin name, it's going to be MFWP underscore plugin name. Um, now, that may sound a little bit redundant if you word it out because then it would be my first WordPress plugin underscore plugin name. But don't think of the prefix like that. Just think of it as a prefix. It's a safety that makes sure that your variables and your functions do not conflict with other variables or functions. Um, so always, always, always prefix your, your variables and prefix your functions. If you want, you can even do this. Um, MFWP underscore prefix equals mfwp underscore and now you can simply use this variable name to equal your prefix now this is kind of silly but in some cases it actually makes a lot of sense and works really really well um, I'll show you examples later on in other parts of this tutorial series uh, in cases where you might use that but always prefix always 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 prefix so this should give you a pretty good idea of how you want to structure things Number one, give your plugin its own folder and name that folder aptly. Name it the same thing that your file is named. Two, put your root plugin file, your root plugin file is the one that contains all of this header information, put that in the base of that folder. Second, create an includes folder. Now that can be includes, it could be called inc. Like I said, your actual exact methods don't necessarily matter. It's the way that you do it, the structure. Um, always have an includes folder or something similar and then inside of that includes folder put your other files and in those other files those are what are going to do the actual bulk of the plugin work so in my scripts.php this is going to do everything that has to do with scripting uh, in my data processing this is going to do everything that has to do with processing the data your main plugin file shouldn't be very large actually you can actually kind of think of your main plugin file as being an index to the rest of your plugin. So I can go in here and I can immediately see, okay, this is what this variable is. So any 
anytime I'm in another file for this plugin, I know that's what this variable is. Number two, I can go in and see, okay, we have a scripts file, we have a data processing file, we have a file X, file Y, etc. that I know do these other certain things. And if you wanted to get even better, you could actually go ahead and leave a comment in here that says, this controls all JS slash CSS. This controls all saving of data. That way, someone can come in here immediately and say, okay, I know that there's a problem with this area. Where is it going to be? Oh, it's going to be in scripts.php because that's where the JS file is located. So think of it as an index, and that will get you a long long ways into building much, much better plugins. I can look back at some of my first plugins I wrote, and the main plugin file is 12, 1,200, 2,000 lines long, very few comments, and is complete jargon in terms, not even jargon, it's just a complete mess in the way that it's laid out, because none of it is organized. If you start your very first plugin organized, you will be so much happier down the road and you will progress so much quicker because you'll have this logical organization in your mind already and it will already be set. Um, the last thing I will tell you is leave comments, leave comments, leave comments. Um, if Even if somebody can look at your function and know what it does, leave a comment that says this is what this function does. This function saves the data. Well it's kind of a no duh because it says save data, but it still helps. Uh, believe me, as someone who's gone and looked at dozens, hundreds of other plugins by other developers, and I've seen wonderful comments and I've seen horrible comments. I myself have definitely left horrible comments places and I've done some really good comments other places. Leaving comments always helps. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this has been helpful in how to write your first plugin. Um, the next couple parts of this series are going to be continuing this plugin so by the end of the series we'll actually have a complete plugin that will do a variety of things um, so I hope you continue watching and I hope this has been helpful and please follow along go ahead and set up your first plugin structure like this and go ahead and continue building it expanding your first plugin and doing things and then as you watch further parts of the series see if what you've done and what I'm telling you to do if they make sense if they go together if um, etc so Go ahead, play along. I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a great day.